Over the past few days, I've spent some time deciding and editing this video to show the true usability of FL Sun's latest product, the Speeder Pad. It's truly an exciting time in the world of Clipper firmware, as many companies are taking advantage of the COVID stroke chip supply problems while addressing the requirements of many wanting speed, quality and efficiencies on their 3D printers. With FL Sun boasting their commitment to delivering quality Delta printers, it has just done that with their latest V400 printer. Despite a number of challenges again with COVID and global shipping problems, this has left some awaiting delivery. However, when it came to shipping me the speeder pad, this arrived very quickly. So when this arrived earlier on this week, I assumed that it was a box of filament as it seemingly had the same weight and box volume. Inside you'll find what's best described as a pamphlet, which outlines some of the basic parameters including the configuration of the FL Sun lineup which includes the V400, Speed Eraser, Q5, QQS, and it goes on to list another five i3 style printers with chipsets and bed sizes. The blurb continues, connect to a printer, selecting language, time zones, bed leveling, network connections, webcam link ups, and multi-link first views. Also in the box and what you can see in my hand is a ADXL module, which is used to measure input shaping. Ironically, you won't know about this inside of the box because it doesn't tell you. One of many key advantages to Clipper is the measurement of movement of frequencies. This module will be mounted to the hot end of your printer and a series of tests can be requested. The result should be a reduction of ringing on your 3D print. Digging deep, we finally reached the brains in the form of the speeder pad. Seven inches of capacitive touchscreen with a 1024 by 600 resolution. The CPU is an R818 quad core a53, which to be honest with you means nothing to me, running Ubuntu with 1 gig of RAM and 16 gig of memory. On the side you'll find three USBs, on the top you'll find an SD card slot for flashing, by the way you'll need this, and of course the power plug. On the back of the pamphlet it reads, what are we doing? We want more people to use Clipper without barriers, and this my friends is where the relationship becomes complicated. You are watching a master at work. Are you not entertained? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes This Happen. I'm Sam Prentice, back once again making it happen. And it seems today that everybody, and I mean pretty much everybody, seems to be having some sort of sonic speeder pad clipper concoction of some sort coming out, which is, in a word, brilliant, of course. But are these actually any good? Now, I'm going to be concentrating on the FL Suns version today, and there will be another video coming out where we look at perhaps the Creality Sonic Pad as well, see what happens. And the sponsor of this video today are my friends over at PCBWay.com. Thank you once again for their kind and ongoing support. It allows me to make more content and travel inside this wonderful world of the YouTube bubble. You can, of course, help too by clicking that subscribe button and chucking me a little like. Thank you very much. As you know, PCBWay do a fabulous job of PCB prototyping, CNC machining, and laser cutting. I love that they also allow shared projects on their site. Today, I wanted to show you that user Bunin has been working on a combat robot inside of Fusion 360. I'm not sure if this will ever become a reality, but maybe this design will inspire you to build something just as awesome and at PCBWay.com. Speeder pad, speeder pad. Now, if you have already ordered your V400 from FL Sun, you will get a speeder pad included on that because that's what runs the whole thing around the V400, which is absolutely fantastic. The thing that you don't get is the accelerometer with the USB lead. So they don't currently have this listed on their site, uh, and I don't know why that is, but it seems to me that you really should get one of these with it. Uh, Probably should have come with the V400, if I'm being completely honest, and maybe they will ship that with that in the future. I don't know. The other thing you don't get with the speeder pad, as in the $149 one, is this stand, which again, you know, there's no compromise with this really. It is what it is. But, Clipper. Now, on the V400, on the Clipper pad, it works exceptionally well. Um, it is a modified version of Clipper. Uh, some might say that it's been butchered. Some might say that it's adequate. However, in my first testing, the V400 on the new clipper pad worked seamlessly, absolutely fine. However, when it came down to the Speedy Racer or the original SR, I started having some problems, and here's why. So we've just connected everything up, and as you can see at the top of the screen, we're currently connected as the V400. And as I said before, the functionality is completely fine. No issues, and if I hit home, the printer operates as you would expect. You can select all the elements around the UI also without issue. So the issue that I had was when I was trying to connect my SR to port number two. So when you go into configuration and select the SR and go to port two, which is the middle USB in my case, you end up with what's called a PC zero error. Now I will say this problem will only affect a small number of users, and this is because 
because when the SR first came out, it came out with a clone SKR 1.3 board, but it was then swapped out for a Robin Nano. So the best guess here would be it would work if you had that particular board installed. So my overall problem with this approach is to be adding this without any prompting, and it's kind of a little slapdash. And I have some concerns over the generic printer formats of A, B, C, D, and E. These printer profiles are just poorly put together. And to give you an example, we've recently seen other manufacturers pads starting to heat hot ends up without warning. If you're looking to plug a speedy pad into another printer, which to be fair is the premise of this whole idea, who's to say that you don't end up damaging your printer? And at that point, whose fault is it? Is it yours? Is it the speedy pads? It's debatable. Let me know in the comments below what your opinion is on this. So meanwhile, I have reflashed the clipper pad with FL Sun's up-to-date firmware. This allows you to connect via SSH to Pi at your IP address, then with the password FL Sun. I've also obtained the SKR firmware files, both from FL Sun and also my buddy Teddy. Thank you very much, Teddy. I've also reflashed the motherboard with the firmware.bim file, but have been unable to wake up the MCU. So I've used Call, which I believe is how it's pronounced, to connect via SSH and obtain the USB serial address. But I am pleased to say that after a little bit of messing around, we did manage to get this working. There were one or two little small issues with the config files, which were both incorrect, unfortunately, on the um, on the heights. But we managed to correct those, and uh, thank you to everybody that was involved with that. We now have a working printer. And needless to say, in the links below, and if you do have the SKR 1.3 clone board, of course I'm going to share that with you. So that's it, right? No, we've still got one spare speeder pad. So let's do something interesting with this one. Over on GitHub, I came across Cyril Gislian's GitHub page. I reached out to him incidentally about a USB addressing issue that I was having and asked him if I could feature his GitHub page on my video. The reason being is, well, freedom. If you're wanting Clipper, why do you want a version that's controlled by somebody else other than Clipper? Now, bear with me here. The GitHub page states the following. By default, FL Sun does not use builds from the official GitHub repositories. Updates point to repositories that are either very slow, sometimes inaccessible, and not updated. In addition, during delta calibration, tower, angles, and delta radiuses are never recalculated in their clipper build, which can cause several issues. This procedure explains the whole process in order to obtain root access on the speeder pad to configure it correctly with optimized printer settings. So I've just followed those instructions, and now we have a clipper pad the fl sun element has actually been now removed so we're going to now put the v400 element back into the pad and we're going to see if that's going to be working now make sure you check out that github page Cyril does also have a paypal link there i've just bunged him a few quid for a quick drink because it's been essentially very very helpful and his page has been phenomenal in that space so make sure you check that page out as well having set up the sr with the fl sun pad and the v400 with the fl sun pad just running clipper you can see that there are some slight deviations between the the two. These are, in all honesty, merely the Emperor's new clothes, but I do prefer the clipper colours and the navigation, be it all very similar. Either way, updates to the clipper pad will be forthcoming, and I'd strongly suggest that if you are going to be taking this as a simple plug and play item, that you do also take the time to understand that it might not be as simple as you were led to believe. So essential reading over at clipper3d.org, and also watching several YouTube videos, and I can suggest a few in the description, such as Michael from Teaching Tech, Taylor from Nero3D, and Chris over at Chris's Basement. All of these guys have unbelievable backgrounds in clipper firmware, building 3D printers and working with companies and the community to make the 3D printing world a better place. Now I have sped this element of the video up as it really is just showing you the clipper skins here. You can of course customize your own screens and there are loads of different skins that you can pop into your UI if you feel the need to. Personally though, I prefer the clipper UI as it gives me all the information required. I did note also that there is some weird issue with time-lapse functions on the FL Sun element of clipper. And to solve this, you need to download the Moonraker interface and use the G code to be sent from Cura directly. Again, of course, you can overcome this by standardizing clipper and installing fluid or mainsail, but hey, that's for another time. And finally here, I just wanted to show you the UI of the screens. The screen on the left is the FL Sun stock clipper setup with the slightly more colorful one on the right, which is the stock clipper version. So as far as the clipper pad goes, um, I'm kind of impressed with this. And certainly if you can't get hold of a Raspberry Pi and do the same thing, essentially, this is a kind of plug and play item but I think it needs some finessing, I think it needs some work, and I think it needs a better understanding from the community of exactly what this thing is. It's not gonna be a plug and play item. It might be a plug and play item though if you're just running FL Sun stuff. If you're using this for other types of printers and you think this is gonna be a good plug-in solution for that, 
it might not be. Um, overall, though, I am impressed with this pad. I'm really glad that they've come out with something like this. I think it's quite diverse, and I think the diversity in this space right now between Creality and FL Sun, it's really kind of elevate their platform overall. So thanks very much to FL Sun for sending me this for review. Thank you to everyone that's been involved with this and uh, enabling me to get this video out. I do appreciate it. And don't forget, guys, to hit that like button, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Bye for now. You are watching a master at work.